Hello and welcome to today's video. I'm just sitting down today with my uh, last bullet journal, which I've now sort of basically filled and I'm getting ready uh, to start my next bullet journal. It's now currently uh, the beginning of March in 2024. And since I've changed my bullet journal practice, I'm now going through a, a, a book in about six to seven months, as opposed to I was going through them in sort of three to four before, but I'm using a few other planning systems this is now part of my planning system. Um, firstly, apologies, I'm homesick today. Um, so <clears throat> I apologize for my voice, but this is... Uh, I wanted to make a video of setting up my new bullet journal. Now, I've been using this beautiful Archer and Olive notebook and I bought like three of these in one hit and I've been working through them. I think they're absolutely lovely. Um, but I wanted to go sort of slightly old school for my next one. And so I got myself a Leuchtturm 1917 uh, notebook. This is their standard uh, notebook with the dot grid. It's not their bullet specialist bullet journal edition or anything like that. This is the absolute standard. I said I wanted to go kind of old school and sort of see what I could, um, you know, just, just enjoy doing it again, you know, in more sort of basic terms. Now, my bullet journal is exceptionally minimalist, and I make no apologies for that whatsoever. So if you're looking for a bullet journal that's filled with watercolor paintings and beautiful marker work and all that kind of thing, you might want to look at another video. However, if you want something that is clean and simple uh, and some ideas for a really basic way of setting up your bullet journal and how to use it in your day, daily practice, my system, or my way of using the system, I should say, might be a little bit more your style. Okay, so I've been bullet journaling since 2017, pretty consistently since then, and I've honed my bullet journaling method to be very minimalist and very much just what I need it to be. And so I'm going to show you a little bit of that today. I'm not an expert, I'm just an enthusiast. I love bullet journaling, I love the system, and I love what it's done for me in terms of the organization and how I can organize my life and my tasks. So let's have a look. Now, a couple of things to start with. Firstly, I use basic supplies. The main pen I use in my bullet journal is just this. This is a simple uni pin fine liner. I really enjoy these. This is made by uh, Mitsubishi, so the new Lamy, and um, it's just a 0.7. Um, I really like it, so I use that. I use a simple grey lead pencil for a lot of the stuff. I don't know how much I'll need that today. Um, I use a highlighter at the moment. I'm using this very cool Muji olive green highlighter, which I really, really love. I use washi tape. So this is a washi tape I designed and had made, uh, and we'll be looking at this and a few more designs sort of coming up, uh, which I love that. Um, I use a ruler. So I'm just using my monograph brass ruler. Uh, that's just for straight lines, not measuring or anything like that. And then a couple of fountain pens. And at the moment, I have um, my Asvine uh, fountain pen here with a Robert Oster ink in it. It's a beautiful, like, green from, uh, which is one of the specialist ones from, exclusive ones from Pen Chalet. And then I've got my Lamy Dark Lilac here with Lamy Dark Lilac ink in it. After all the controversy recently, I've been using it just because it is just so much fun. And there's been so much controversy with Lamy recently, so... Um, Interesting, interesting times ahead. Yeah. Now, something I wanted to show before I actually get started in putting stuff in the journal is this sheet, which I make. So what I do is whenever I start a new bullet journal or a new brand of book, I photocopy a page and I mark it up on that photocopy as a template. So what I've said here is that it's 26 spaces by 37 spaces, um, which gives me a good idea if I have to divide it into certain amounts of you know, sort of space. On this side, I've done... You can't do perfect thirds on this, so I've done a 12, 13, 12 split, but I can adjust that as needed. Um, same on the bottom here, you can't do even thirds, so I've done 9, 8, 9. Uh, across the top, I've marked where the center is. Um, I've marked where the quarters are, which fall between spaces. Down this side, I've done the same halves and quarters, and also marked, uh, occasionally I'll do a weekly spread in this. I don't do that a whole lot, most of my bullet journaling is planning, uh, so sort of like longer projects, not my daily planning that I do in a Hobonichi. Um, but I've marked where if I wanted to do a weekly spread, so it's splitting the page into seven, I can do um, seven even spaces with two lines at the top for, you know, for the dates or whatever a header, you know. So that's the basic rundown. I know if I follow that line and I follow that line, that gets me right in the middle of the page. So this is great because when I'm setting up a spread, 
Um, let's use that weekly setup as an example. If I wanted to do, you know, mark out where my uh, days are, I don't have to count them. I can simply line this page up so all the dots line up. And then I know that these dots, well, these lines of dots are where those, um, those weekdays will be. It's really it's super handy. Um, and it's a technique I borrowed from someone years ago, but I think it just works so, so well. So we're actually going to start. Now, one thing I will also say is these Leuchtturm uh, notebooks, they have, you know, space for your name and stuff at the front. I don't generally use that. They also have an index at the front, which I generally use for ink testing. Um, I don't normally use these index pages as index pages. I have something different that I do, um, which I found really useful to me, which we'll get to in just a little bit. The first dotted page here, the first standard page, becomes my contact page and my key. So we're gonna quickly set that up. As I've said, my bullet journal is super minimalist. So there's not a whole lot of color. There's not a whole lot of you know fancy stuff. It's really old school bullet journaling, um, you know, basics. So I'll just set this up here. Basic com uh, contact info, I'll put my phone number in there after I've filmed, um, and then a key. So if you're not familiar with it, the key is where you list the symbols uh, that you're gonna use to help you manage the tasks in your, um, in your bullet journal. So a simple dot in the middle of the square is a signifier for a task. So we say that's a task. Then what I do is uh, if uh, I swallow the frog task, I put a circle around it. And that becomes my swallow the frog. Swallow the frog is the idea that that is a task that is gonna, uh, you've either been putting off or that you don't wanna do, and you just get it done first. So as you're setting up a list, you go, okay, this is the thing I'm gonna have to do first. I hate doing this, but that you get it done. You swallow the frog. Then I have a priority task, which I put an exclamation mark in the square next to it. Okay, and then we have four other task um, signifiers. So my greater task is an arrow leading forward through it. That means that task was moved forward to another day or another task list. A delegated task, a backward arrow, signifies a task that has been put back into a different list. So instead of saying uh, this is on the daily list for today or whatever, you can put it back into like a monthly list or a future planning list. Um, and then we get a completed task, which speaks for itself. That is the international uh, symbol for the dopamine hit. And then you get a... A cancelled task. So if something is no longer needed, I put a line through it as opposed to across, uh, and that signifies it doesn't need to be done anymore. Then I have a couple of simple things I do when I'm writing out the uh, to-do list items just to save me time. They're really simple. E for email, M for message, P for phone. That way if I need to phone someone, I don't have to write phone, blah, 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 I just put P and their name. So that is my super simple key. It's so, so easy. You will have different things you do. People use colors, people use different sorts of things. That is my very simple key. It's clear, it works for me. And that goes on page one. And it's one of the things I do like about these Leuchtturm uh, books is that they do have numbered pages, which makes the indexing a hell of, a hell of a lot easier later on. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you that now. So I actually do my index at the back of the book. And I start it on the final spread and I work into the book. So here I can put index and I put one and that is my key. And then whenever I do a page, I can log it or I can say, go to this page Whatever you want to use your index, a lot of people uh, put the item that it is and then list all the pages that it happens afterwards. That's a great way of doing it. I prefer to put a list of pages and what is on that. And then let's say the key ends up starting on page one and then I do a new key on page 110. I would just put uh, you know 110, a little arrow, and then 110 after that. Really super simple. Uh, and then that gets logged. And that way, as you're working through the book from the front with all your spreads and everything, you work towards that with the index. So you don't have to leave a certain amount of pages for it. You don't need to know how many pages you're gonna use. They just sort of end up working to a central point. 
So today, as we are doing the absolute basic sort of startup, and yours will be different and what you need will be different, this is just showing what I do, um, we're gonna start the next page over here, and this will be my yearly spread. Now, obviously I'm starting this in March, and so a lot of people like to sort of start their bullet journals at the beginning of the year, or at the six months. I start it wherever I'm up to, and that is the year I will log in here. Um, so the way I will do this, and, um, you know, I will sort of cut through this a lot so you don't have to watch all of it, uh, is put the dates down the side of each of these pages. And then I split the page uh, with the remaining uh, portions of the page, which if I... So we know that there's 26 squares across the page. If I use two here for the date, you know, 1 through to 31, I can use four squares for each of the months and end up with the year being across the two pages. That way, I have a, a section, a little one by four square per day of the year. This gives me a really great way of saying, okay, for these two months, I'm on contract with this company. In these three weeks, I'm uh, in Japan. It's just a really simple way. So I'll just quickly do a beginning of this setup and we can get going. So there's the numbers in, then I'm gonna take my ruler and from one down to 31, I will draw a line. And then after four lines, I will draw the next line. And there we have six months and I'll, I'll fill this one out later, uh, but we go March. And there is our, this will then become a full yearly visible planner across the two pages. It's super, super simple. And as I said, uh, that way then I can go, oh, from the 10th to the 28th of March, I'm in Japan, which I'm not, but I would love to be. But that gives you an idea as to how that uh, layout can actually work for you. And that way across the year, you've got the entire year. Obviously not every month has 31 days. You just use it to where you want to. Some people may want to block out uh, that day that's not there, like April 31st, for instance. Um, I just leave it and I just fill in the days as I need them. So full view yearly planner across the two pages. Very simple, but a great way to see the next 12 months ahead. Now, over the page, I do a future log. Now, people use future logs in completely uh, different, wonderful ways. My future log is a single page and I use what's called the Alistair method, which I'll explain to you in just a, a bit. But let's set this up to start with. Now, mine is exceptionally simple. I take my ruler and I draw a line across the page. Okay, then turning it sideways just so that I can read it easier and write it easier. In this final square here, I put beyond. And then I work six months out from, so we're March now, so I will do April uh, for six months. Okay, and that's the basic setup of my future log. Now, how does it work? Well, once again, I'm just gonna pull up a, my, use my uh, gray lead pencil here so I can erase it once, you know, because this is just an example of how the system works. So let's say I need to get my car serviced. but I know I have to do that in May. So I write it there and then under May, I put a nice bullet point. Then let's say, uh, you know, I have to apply for a grant. And that has to be in April. And then let's say I am, you know, uh, needing to pay my website hosting. but that's not due until December, which is, you know, beyond here, I put December, and if it's, you know, let's say December 12, and then I put that dot in the beyond column. So how does this help me when I'm setting up my monthly spreads, which I'll show you the monthly spread in uh, the next uh, page. So I'm now setting up my April spread for next month. 
I go, okay, what is in April? And I go, okay, so I go down the April column here and I say, oh, apply for grant. And that gets put in my April to-do list. Very simple. Then when I'm setting up the next future log, once I get into August or September, I might start thinking about setting up the next future log for the next six months. Anything that's in this beyond column, I can go, okay, that's in December. And I can then put that under the December banner. It's super, super simple. LSA method, so that continues down this page. I leave the next page free. Uh, that generally will spread across, or that's where I set up the next one. But it's a super clear, easy way of setting up a future log that actually allows you the freedom to not have to be contained to four months or whatever. You can actually be contained to any period in the future. I could say, um, you know, new tires for my car in... April 2027, put that beyond. And every time I do this list, it gets put into the beyond column until April 2027 is one of these um, months that are listed in the system. And then when it comes to April 2027, that goes into the monthly list. Love the Alistair method. I've loved this so much. It's clean, it's clear, it's super, super minimalist uh, and super useful. Okay, now we're coming to the final spread I'm going to set up today. Now, as I've said, I do a lot of spreads for things like projects and operas and things that I'm involved in. And I will show a couple of those throughout the year as I do them. I'm going to make a couple of little videos later on in the year just showing my uh, you know, interesting spreads and things I've done that I've found useful. This is going to be my personal bullet journal, so I will not be showing all of it because that is my personal information. I'm showing you what I think is useful uh, and handy, uh, but not all my personal bits and pieces. Okay, so now we are doing the March page. So this is this month, March 2024. Simple at the top there. Nothing else. Easy. Then, once again, I'm going to do these numbers up the side column here, but then I'm going to put the day of the week that those are. Now, you would have noticed I started from the bottom up. That's just a thing I've always done because then you don't, uh, you know, misinterpret how much space you need. You start with the last day and you work up and you end up with the right amount of space. Just a, you know, you can easily count down, you know, you need five spaces before it and then you start down, whatever it might be. That's just how I've set it up. Now, the 1st of March was a Friday, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then I continue that right set through. So that's my monthly calendar, and next to that, I can write the important things I need to do or need to know on those days. For instance, March 25th is my birthday. There you go, my birthday. Now, the second part of this page, once again, here I take my ruler, and I'm not scientific about this. Um, if you wanted to be, you definitely could be. I uh, just write roughly halfway across the page, um, and then that becomes the task list. So this is where I would uh, reference that Alexander method in future months, obviously, uh, and transfer things that are listed for that month into this task column. Um, you know, so I will put clean garage it's a it's a mess it needs to be done uh, clean garage and uh, I'm going to be uh, sell fountain pens they're going back on sale this month so keep an eye out for those if you're interested in buying some as well nice once again simple now because of these task points if we refer back to that original key here, um, you know, as things can get delegated or migrated, let's say I decide that I'm going to sell the fountain pens in May. I can then make that a delegated task, go back to the future log, and then put sell fountain pens and put it under the May column. Uh, if I am, you know, cleaning garage becomes part of my spring clean setup, I can, you know, move that forward and put it into a spring clean list. Whatever the case is, it's how you can kind of get around it using it. Um, so this is a, once again, a very simple half of my monthly setup. The other half of my monthly setup is kind of more related uh, to uh, specific things. So once again, I do uh, the day setup down the side or the date setup down the side. Okay, now this section of the page is also uh, separated into two specific uh, lists. 
So I'll put a little line across and then a little line across. Once again, not being particularly scientific about it. Uh, one is budget and one is social media and YouTube. Once again, this is a very, very simple list. Um, let's say in the budget section, my rent is due on the 15th of each month. I can go 15th and I can put um, alongside the 15th there, rent, however many dollars that is. And then I can list those expenses that are due on those specific days. This isn't a budget like on this day I spent this much. It's being able to forward plan to know when those funds are coming out and how much you need to have on those specific days. Social media and YouTube. Um, I'm not exactly sure what day this video is going live, but let's say it's on uh, Thursday the 7th. Um, I can put Bujo set up. Video. And that way I can keep a, a at a glance view of when things are happening on YouTube and social media. Once again, this is all super simple. Your planning should help you. You shouldn't spend more time doing the planning than you actually take to do the task. By setting this up, and it's taken me a few minutes to set up this spread, I can plan out my entire month from a you know appointments, tasks, social media, and budget across a single spread. And it's clean. There's no fancy grid work. There's no fancy stamps and stickers and all that kind of stuff. It's just really, really basic. Now, I did say this was going to be the last spread I was going to set up, but what I thought I would do, and I'm just going to use pencil for this because, as I said, this is my personal journal. It's not what I do in here. I wanted to set up how a daily setup might look like in this journal. Okay, using this system, I know a lot of people use daily spread uh, log pages. I don't personally, um, but I have in the past, and this is a system I found particularly useful. Um, at the beginning of each day, I would sit down with my journal and I would write the day at the top. Uh, so let's go once again with that. What did I say that was? Uh, Thursday the 7th. So Thursday, 7 March. 2024. Let's say on that day I have a uh, 9 a.m. doctor's appointment. And then I'm at work from uh, 1 till 7 uh, at work. So at the start of the day, I would write that out. I take that from my iCal or from my Hobonichi or whatever, you know, actual forward planning calendar system I use. Um, I would consult things like the monthly spread to see if there was anything on that specific day that I needed to do. Um, and then I would do my daily task list. Now, a lot of people log ideas and everything, and you can log whatever you want in this list. But I might say, okay, uh, I need to clean the garage. I need to sell fountain pens. I need to take out the rubbish. And I need to practice the Verdi. Okay, let's say that's my daily task list. And you'll notice I print most things here as well. I don't do cursive or anything like that. It's got to be clean for me. Um, let's say that's my daily task list. That's a, that's a fairly, you know, it's a very simple day. I wish it was that easy. Um, let's say, at the, so that, that's my daily list. I know that uh, taking out the rubbish is going to be the thing that I've been putting off. So I make that my swallow the frog. So I put a circle around that, and then I know that that is my task I'm going to do the first thing as soon as I get going on stuff. And let's say cleaning the garage is a priority on that day. Excellent. Then, during the day, I decide that I'm actually not going to be selling the fountain pens. That uh, is still going to go back up once again, I said, into May. I'm going to delegate that. Or, you know, if I wanted to, I could put a line through and cancel it. And at the end of the day, I didn't practice my Verdi. Uh, so I migrate that. And then when I'm setting up the next day, uh, you know, Friday the 8th of March, uh, practice Verdi is moved forward onto that list. Minimalist. Minimalist bullet journaling, I'm all for it. So I know this was a bit of a convoluted long video, but I hope you found it interesting. I hope you found something there useful, particularly if you're just starting out with bullet journaling. Like there is so much out there about bullet journals being, you know, big and colorful and bright and all that kind of stuff. I, 
I'm all for that. And if that's what you want to do with your bullet journal, then you absolutely should. For me, the minimalist bullet journal uh, pathway has always been the cleanest and the easiest, and it's been the most effective for me. So there's lots of material out there about how to do that. Check out Ryder Carroll's videos. Check out my old videos. Um, you know, check out uh, Mark's pages. You know, does a beautiful uh, stuff in, in his bullet journal as well, or bullet journals, I should say. It's quite amazing. Um, but this was my basic setup. So this is what I'm going to be moving forward with. I'll go and finish all those uh, off camera and, uh, yeah, move forward through the days. Throughout the year, as I said, I'll make a couple of little videos that talk about different spreads and how they worked. Uh, you know, I might show uh, versions of them sort of um, like on um, separate pages so that you don't actually see what I did. Uh, but, you know, once again, for personal information, but if there's something I think that's useful that could be useful to you, I think I'll pass it on a couple of times throughout the year and then maybe do a bit of a recap towards the end of this calendar year just to see where I'm at with it. So I hope you enjoy your bullet journaling journey. Uh, and uh, in the next video, I hope to see you there as well. So thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Hit the notifications button, all that kind of stuff. If you've got products you'd like me to look at or if you've got videos you'd like me to uh, make, let me know and uh, we can uh, talk about it. So thank you again and uh, enjoy your bullet journaling. And I'll talk to you soon.